book I read aloud was No David by David Shannon. And I did that in honor of our new little puppy who was outside. So if you want to see, you're going to have to go see the read aloud. Okay. And what I decided was um, I chose this book for two reasons. Um, one, I like the illustrations. I also like the fact that this is a book that he actually wrote when he was about David's age. And it involved know a lot. And I also like the fact that you can use this with older kids to teach about commas. But that's not what we're doing right now. Right now, we're going to use some math to draw one of my favorite pictures in the whole book. And it's kind of gross, but I love this picture. And it is right here. And it's stop that this instant. And we are not only going to talk about this picture and draw it, but we're going to do some character traits with this picture too. Remember, character traits can be inside or outside, like outside being what we see and inside being the kind of person you are on the inside. So this is, let me show you the whole page. This is what we're gonna draw, okay? So if you see some basic shapes, we've got circles, we've got just some line segments, we've got a triangle, we have everything. If you remember, we can draw everything made of our basic shapes, okay? So to start, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold my paper into quarters. Now, how many parts are quarters? Four, okay? Like they're four quarters and a dollar. All right, so I'm going to draw mine, I mean, divide my paper into, or partition my paper into four parts just to make it easier to do because I want to leave part of it for my character traits. And remember, when no matter what grade you're in, you're kind of learning character traits. And traits is a really fancy word for like how they are or what you see or what you notice about them. Okay? So, if you remember, we see David really close up in this picture. So, I'm going to make his face pretty much take up half the page. So, if I look here, I've got my, per, I've got my perpendicular lines. A vertical line going straight up and down and a horizontal line going side to side right here and I have four parts and remember four parts of a whole this is one fourth one fourth one fourth one fourth or one quarter one quarter one quarter one quarter either way so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of draw almost just a half circle right here to be his face and I'm going to, if you if you have trouble just drawing, it almost like you're drawing the, the big part of a D, or you could flip it around this way and you could just draw a C, which makes it a little easier. Remember, when you're drawing, you don't have to stay facing the same way. So then he had just regular black circle eyes. That's another reason why I like this author and this illustrator same thing as our pigeon we had an author and an illustrator that were the same because they use very simple drawing techniques that allow us to help copy so he we had two circles we've got mad eyebrows remember how he talked about that you can show expression on your drawings by the eyebrows his nose if you remember was a really big triangle okay and he had one hole here, and then he had this big hole here because his finger was sticking in it. That's so gross. No wonder she said, stop that this instant, David, or no David. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my hand first, okay? And I'm going to draw his finger almost like it's a rectangle, so it's got parallel lines, okay? And then I am going to kind of go down a little bit and then I'm going to go up this way again with some parallel lines, but this time I'm going to make it curve because that's going to be a thumb, and I'll put a thumb nail right there. And I'm just going to make it go off the page. And then over here, I'm going to make some little humps just to be the other fingers. And it's going to go off the page too. Now we know that our fingers have these knuckles, and the cells probably have more knuckles than yours, but we're going to do little line segments. Remember, line segments are 
lines that have a beginning point and an ending point. Okay, they don't keep going on and on like regular lines. All right, and we have, we're gonna erase this because we wanna erase any unnecessary lines and then we're gonna make it look like his finger is up inside his nose by drawing the circle around, okay? And that is obviously gross, so of course he hears stop the hat, this instant. And remember, she says it with so much enthusiasm that we put an exclamation point and it points up and it tells our voices to go up. So stop that this instant. All right, so now we have pretty much half of our page, okay, because two-fourths equals one-half, and we're going to do some character traits over on this side, okay? So remember, character traits are what make our character who they are, and we have character traits that are on the inside and character traits that are on the outside that you can see. So we're going to do the major character traits first. We're gonna do our, our character outside because they're easier for us to see. So when you look on the outside, what does he look like? What is he, what do you see, okay? So we see as we go through here that he's obviously does not listen because she has to say no David all the time. He's always trying to do things he shouldn't. I'm pretty sure he didn't mean to track this mud in, but he did. I mean, I think of some words right here, like dirty. That's an outside trait, okay? Um, also, outside traits would have to do with what he looks like. So, we've got his, his kind of orangey, creamy colored skin. He's got a tiny bit of hair. Um, most of the time, he's wearing red pants and white shoes and a blue and white shirt. So, that would be part of his, okay? He's got pointy teeth. That would be an outside trait. All right, so let's write down some of these. So we've got um, um, peachy or light tan skin. Okay, he usually has on red pants. White shoes. He's usually dirty. That's something we can see on the outside. And he has sharp teeth. Now, of course, we could come up with more than that, but I'm going to stick with just five. All right, so now we're going to go to his inside teeth. This kind of makes it the kind of person he is on the inside. Okay? So, obviously, we would want to say bad, but in my classroom... Um, in my math to heart classroom, bad is a cuss word, and that means that you can come up with a better word than that. So, I would probably use maybe the word naughty. Naughty is a fancy word for the word bad. Okay. Um, I had a child tell me he was disrespectful because he didn't listen to his mom. He is definitely messy. And I saw lots of places where he was sneaky. But the other thing I saw at the end of our book was when all he wanted was for his mommy to love him because he loves his mom. So I'm actually going to put a positive character trait here called loving because he was loving. Now you can do your character traits however you want. You can even make more character traits. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to color my um, picture of David, and I'm just going to do one more quick look at what he looked like in this picture so I can kind of get an idea of what colors I need to use. And I see I've got some light tan, kind of orangey, peachy, and it's like an Oompa Loompa color. And I've got some red and some black. Okay, so remember that when you are coloring, you want to slow down when you get to where the um, the lines are, okay? And you want to um, 
he does not have to follow at all what he looks like in the the um, picture. You can do whatever you want. Remember that you don't have to push down hard. If you push down hard, you're going to break whatever you're coloring with or whatever you're painting with. Um, you just need to go over it more than once. So if you want it darker instead of pushing down harder, which will take longer because the friction between your crayon and the um, table as you push, you know that friction can slow you down. That's how brakes work. And so you want to just not push down so hard and you'll be able to go faster. And then what you do is if you want it darker, then you just go back over it again at the same pressure and it will make it darker. Okay. So I'm going to color my David and I'm going to go ahead and just color over the words too, because I'm just going to come back and go over those because I like to trace my pencil lines so you don't see them. Ah, I lost something. I'm not sure what that was that fell. I'm not used to having to be careful when I color because the color the table I color on at school is just super messy and now I'm coloring on my kitchen table and I have to be careful. So if you're coloring on your kitchen table, go ahead and be careful too. And I'm coloring over his eyes because I'm going to come back to his eyes and I am going to color them black. I'm going to color them black so that's why I'm not worried about going over his eyes. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna get the rest of his face color. And then I remember his nose being so much darker than the rest of his face. I just had like a little more orange in it. So I'm gonna come back and remember we talked about him looking, looking like an Oompa Loompa off of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add some more orange to his nose so that you can see. Kind of like the way David Shannon did when he illustrated the book. And I'm going to add a little pink to it where his cheeks are kind of pink. I don't know if it was because he was embarrassed because he got caught picking his nose. He should be. Or if he was just being David who was mad a lot of times. Probably because he gets in trouble so much. I don't know. All right, and then I'm gonna color his fingernail, not that he painted his fingernail pink, but most fingernails are kind of like a pinky color. And then I'm gonna go through, and the last thing I'm gonna do is I am going to trace and color in the black parts of my David. So remember to do your eyebrows. Remember to do your Outline, tracing the black of your lines. It sounds like my children have come in from their soccer, PE slash soccer time. And so I'm going to finish this up. Remember that you can go a whole lot slower. I'm going fast just because I need to right now. But you don't have to rush it. There are always things, even after I'm finished, I can always find things I can make better. So I like tracing over my letters. So in this story of No David, we know that the theme of the story is David gets in trouble a lot. He has to, he's learning what's allowed and what's not allowed. Like running naked down the street is not allowed. But he hears no and he hears stop a lot. But he also hears that he love that she loves him. 
So I would love to see your pictures of how they turn out of David. So you can take pictures and leave them in the comments below. Also, if you haven't checked out the read aloud on No David, check it out. And check out my other read alouds with their art activities to go with them too. I hope you all have a great day and I love each and every one of my West Bainbridge students and if you're other kids, I'm so glad you joined us. Join us again soon.